we're talking about DC to DC chargers. I talk to people on the phone almost every day, and most of them are trying to put a million solar panels on the top of their roof. I'm gonna tell you this, I don't have any solar power on the top of my roof. If I did, I'd be like, you know, I don't know, two to 400. I say to them, I know you have a million watts of solar on your uh, Sprinter 144. And I say to them, what are you doing for your DC to DC power? And a lot of people go, well, what's that? That's how you're charging your lithium battery banks off your vehicle while you're driving. While you're driving, you need to be charging your batteries. I always tell people it's math in, math out. You're using an air conditioner that uses 100 amps an hour, and you're only using a DC to DC to charger that's 30 amps. Well, you're gonna have a discrepancy there. Well, I'm not too good with math, but 70? Somewhere around 70 amps an hour? Let's do a little fundamental thing. A couple things here, Kenny. I have a few different DC to DC chargers in front of me. I have Victron Buck Boost in these boxes. I have Victron Orions in this one. I also, right here, have a Belmar secondary alternator for a Mercedes Sprinter van. Let's go through the math. The Victron Buck Boost is available in 50 amps or 100 amps. The Victron Orions are available currently in 30 amps, isolated and non-isolated. The Belmar secondary alternator, 250 amps plus bada bing in your battery bank. What does that mean? If you use one Victron Orion at 50 amps of driving for this 200 amp hour battery, 50 divided by 200, what is that? Four hours of driving it's gonna take to charge this bad boy. Whew. Let's say you have a little bit bigger battery bank, Cole Kenny. So we're gonna slide this, belt, this Victron Buck Boost over to this battery. 50 amps divided by 330, it's gonna take over six hours to charge this one battery with this thing. Now let's say you have two of these. Now you gotta drive for 12 hours, okay? But wait, John, did you know that buck boosts are stackable? Well, yes, they are. This is a beautiful Victron buck boost available right now in the 50. The hundreds are back ordered right now. So let's just go ahead and take that out. We'll go ahead and take out the other one too. If you asked me what my favorite DC to DC charger is, it's the buck boost. Why is it the buck boost? This thing doesn't really get very hot. The Orions are prone to being hot run in commodity. So anything you put inside your vehicle that adds heat is difficult for you on a hot day. These don't really get too hot. Now, why don't I like the Buck Boost? Well, currently the Buck Boost needs to be programmed with a Windows computer. And as you know, Kenny, I don't have a Windows computer uh, running around and I hate using Windows computers. So if you're a Mac guy, you're gonna hate this thing. But what I do like about these things is it's 50 and 50 so that you can actually get 100. So let's go through the math right now. You have 100 amps if you stack these together going into this battery bank. That'll actually takes two hours of driving to charge this one. Oh, move that over to the bigger battery right here. 100, 300 amp hour battery. We're talking a little over three hours to charge this thing. We just cut it in half from just using one. Now these things are a little bit pricey right now. They sell it in a 100 amp version. As I said earlier, it's back ordered. Why don't I use a 100 amp version? Well, it's a little bit bigger than this, but if one of these breaks for some reason, you have what's called redundancy in the system. No reason to use one 100 when for the same price, basically, you can get two 50s. That also means that if you don't wanna run one of them all the time, you can turn one off, either through a relay or a very simple on-off switch. In any van uh, or off-grid application, this is my favorite way to go, fully programmable through a Windows computer if you like Windows. Now, why don't we sell these in our electrical kits over at nomadiccooling.com? We use a Victron isolated Orion. Now, the downside of the Orion, as I said earlier, is they get hot. Let's do the math. Kenny, everyone loves math. Uh, I'm not so good at it, but, oh, is that a 160 amp hour battery? It sure looked like a 200. Well, Jesus, where's my 200s? I'll flip it around just like that. Now it looks like a 200, okay? It's, a, the two, it's about the same size, I gotta be honest with you. We have hundreds of them in boxes over there, but I just wasn't very smart and picked up the wrong one. Everyone out there is gonna say I'm stupid, Kenny, because they're gonna go in there and say it's a 160. Uh, I get it. Uh, this is why I'm a self-proclaimed van genius and not a real one. Okay, so everybody just imagine that's a 200 amp hour battery. It's easier for the math.
but actually the math's a little bit easier on this 330. So if you have one Orion, uh, and the reason we actually use the Orions is because they're Bluetooth. You don't actually need a computer to program it. It really cuts down on the phone calls that we have when people are trying to program the Orion, the, uh, the buck boost. So a 30 amp one, if I slid this over here to this guy, you have to basically drive for 11 hours to fill up this one battery. You have two of them, 22 hours of driving. Okay, now you add a second one in there. Okay, now you've got two. This is a non isolated version, right? What's it say? Non isolated. I just have both of them up here for a little bit of a demo here. Now, you, now you've stacked your Orions and now you can charge at 60. So we're still charging way below what we're charging over here. The mass still cuts in half. Instead of 11 hours to charge this thing, we're at five and a half hours of driving to charge this one battery. Now the bad thing about this is these are gonna get hot as you're driving. So they have to be in a well ventilated uh, part of your vehicle um, and a place that you don't want things to get too hot. If you have this going and your inverter, you're gonna create a lot of heat inside your electrical compartment. Now guys, math in, math out. If you're using a Nomadic Cooling 3000 air conditioner, it uses 100 amps an hour which means this will charge the same rate as your air conditioner. So it's an hour of driving, hour of air conditioner, the two are the exact same. With the Orions, there's still a bit of a discrepancy, but if you're using the air conditioner in eco mode, where it's gonna be using about 50 amps an hour, the Orion stacked like this is gonna be perfect for you. Every electrical kit we sell at Nomadic Cooling has one Orion in it. And the hope is, that eventually you leave room in your system to add a secondary alternator from Belmar. We have them in stock and ready to rock every day. Let's go ahead and take this bad boy out of the box right here. So right here, we have the new Belmar alternator. As you know, Belmar has been leading the industry in alternators in the marine environment for going on a millennia. Okay, so well, we like them. They've been really easy to work with. The mounting brackets, everything works fantastic. We have it on our new SEMA van build that we're currently building right now. We've been really happy with the amperage, but the more important thing for you is basically the math. This is 250 plus amps an hour of driving. If we stack two of these together, we're getting 100, they're 50 each. These are 30 each, stack two together. Now you have 60. You can see that with this guy, you can fill up this battery in less than an hour of driving, okay? Same thing over here. This one right here will fill up this battery in about an hour and 15 minutes of driving. Now you may say to yourself, I'm just not gonna use a lot of power, but you can see how financially, if you buy one of these products early in the system and you leave space and run the wire when you're building your electrical system, you can always have the option of adding a secondary alternator to your vehicle. If you're lucky enough to have bought a Ford vehicle, the secondary alternator is much less expensive and if you can order it from the factory direct, it's only a $750 upgrade for that secondary alternator. Secondary alternator for a Sprinter van, super expensive. And in my opinion, you should take it to a professional mechanic to also have it installed. Currently over here at Nomadic Cooling, we go across the street, get it done with our, uh, with our shop over there called the Ben Shop. They charge us 950 to install the thing. I think it's a reasonable price. They get it done in a day and I know that it's done professionally and I didn't actually have to do the work. What I'd like to do is I'd like to do a little summary on DC to DC chargers and the fundamentals of what you need to know. Amps in, amps out. The faster you can charge your batteries, the less amount of batteries you need. You may be thinking, I need a thousand amp hours in my system. Well, if you have a thousand amp hours in your system, but you're only charging at 30 amps, you're really not understanding the equation. It's how fast you can charge this thing. It's better money spent to spend here on these devices than having more amps go into the electrical system than it is for you to spend money on big battery banks. I think you're better off getting a big DC to DC charger, depending on your needs, and then scaling up your battery system if it's not sufficient for you. The Victron Buck Boost does have to be programmed on a Windows computer, which completely sucks. The Victron Orions can be stacked at 30 amps a piece. They're super easy to use. They have a Bluetooth app, but the negative side of them is they get hot. 
Guys, if you want to go further in comfort with a great DC to DC charger, check out the Victrons and the secondary alternators. And let's go further in comfort with some DC to DC capability with Nomadic Cooling. Let's rock.